everybody welcome back to my channel um, it has been quite a while since I've done a planner video and I'm coming at you with a brand new 2019 bullet journal plan with me um, I'm pretty excited to finally do one of these I've been using my bullet journal now for probably three years um, and never really wanted to share it I really just love it as a creative outlet. Um, it's not so much as a um, daily life planner, per se. It's more of my lists and... Um, sorry, I got crazy dogs. <laughs> um, my lists and things like that. Um, place to put my um, collections and just design ideas and a place to doodle. I mostly use the monthly sections as kind of a, um, just a way to break up the year. I don't tend to use um, the more of the day-to-day -day list planning. I still use my um, inserts that I create for my B6, is it a B6? Yeah, B6 Foxy Fix. Um, I make inserts and sell those on my shop, The Sticky Fox, on Etsy. Um, so yeah, for this first page, I love this first page. It's probably my favorite page out of all of them. Um, it just goes together really well in the end, and it actually comes out beautiful on screen. Um, I really want to get into more using, using Tombows more. I feel like they're basically like using watercolors without the mess and the bleed through almost. I mean sometimes if you use it too many, you have too many layers of it, of it, um, it is, it does feel buildable. I love them. I just don't have very many of them because I think they are kind of expensive. So um, I just had that gray one actually I use quite a lot. Um, I like to have neutral colors. I'll probably build just my favorite colors for those. For the Hello 2019 page, I really wanted to make it feel like the New Year's but also still feel pretty neutral and I really felt like that kind of showed through a little bit. Um, I just got these midliners um, for Christmas. I got some Amazon gift cards so I ordered some midliners and because I love these little pens, I have the Crayola um, super tips um, all, all those colors as well but these ones have that chiseled edge on the other side so I was excited to um, explore using these and of course if anybody's watching this you're obviously a planner person and love pens as much as I do and collecting markers and things like that I was gonna do kind of like a two color scheme with the this kind of goldish, um, kind of almost dandelion yellow color, and then I was gonna use that um, just plain light yellow, but it ended up being more of like a neon yellow, and I wasn't I wasn't feeling that. So I try it out with one um, and try to see what it looks like, and I just I don't know I wasn't in love with it, so I go over it with the midliners instead. This year, I think my one of my biggest goals is just to stick it through with my bullet journal. I find that I leave it and come back and leave it and come back and leave it and come back. Um, and then I just end up not loving it by like June. Um, mostly because I still miss the stickers, but I feel like I found a balance where if I just keep my collections and just a place to doodle and have fun and kind of take inspiration from people that I find online and um, that's that's really what I love using this for. I love to see things online and then try it out on my own and kind of just build my own ideas um, and kind of just plan out projects and things like that. So this is kind of my space to do that and goal setting. 
um, listing, planning for parties that we're hosting or anything like that, um, planning for projects at work. As a little accent, I add these, um, just some gold marks using my um, juice pilot pen and it is the 0.5 size in gold and then for the side um, the page next to it for my year in review I think this just goes really well with the hello 2019 for the new year I use this the midliner gray pen to um, just kind of make a bar across where I'll put the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, etc. Um, on there and for each of the months and then above it all I did some script writing. I just love these pages. I think they just feel aesthetically pleasing to look at them and it's kind of, it just feels beautiful. Although it is time consuming. I use a lot of very fine point pens. Um, I love fine point pens mainly because I'm not very good at scripting. For that hello on the side, I actually traced that. Um, I found a, an image that I really loved and traced it and you know that's, that's the way that I love having beautiful script and things like that, but I'm just not good at it. That is definitely something I want to get better at in 2019, is my own calligraphy and handwriting. The thing that I love most is writing very small with very small point pens. Um, so you'll see me using a lot of that because that's what I'm comfortable with. But for the script, I definitely want to get better at it. And I jumped ahead and kind of went and filled the rest of those months in off camera. Instead of writing year at a glance, I wanted to put something um, a little bit more meaningful up at the top, like a quick little quote. And the quote that I chose is just a really simple two words, you can. And I felt like that would be motivating for me to just remember that I can do it, whatever I'm um, putting my mind to. Sometimes I feel like I'm trying to do put too many things on my plate and I get overwhelmed and things like that, which I know many people feel the same way. So this year, which actually will be my word of the year, I plan on doing Allie Edwards' um, One Little Word challenge again this year. I started it last year and never kind of, never really followed through after like March, um, you know, I think just following through probably should be my other word for the year, but um, balance is what I want to focus on this year. That grid spacing guide I find so incredibly helpful. Um, I originally saw it from Amanda Rachley, um, so I wanted to include that in there because I've already found it so useful um, just on creating these spreads here. That eraser that I use is a Stedler Mars plastic eraser, and I love this thing. It's um, a lifesaver, because I do go through erasers like crazy, and I have mechanical pencils with erasers on them that you can't replace, so well, I guess you could, but I don't really, who wants to replace those? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, in the back here I have a pen test. I just like to see, um, which pens will bleed through the most or which pens write the nicest and sometimes you just forget you don't remember if you're not using the same pens over and over again. Um, this pen that I'm using here is a Faber-Castell um, Pit Artist pen and that one is the brush. I just use the brush pen to basically color things in. I don't use it as a brush for calligraphy. Um, I think this pen specifically the tip of the brush pen actually kind of got a little bit frayed so I have to find a new pen for my challenge for 2019 to get better at scripting and um, calligraphy. 
So if you have any suggestions, let me know of a good beginner's um, script pen that's easy and it's not, not a fountain pen because I feel like that's a little too much work, <laughs> too much effort. For this next page, I was also inspired by Amanda Rachley on this page for the setup um, with the boxes and everything, and it's just very simple. Um, a lot of the things that I do in my bullet journal are very simple, and I like to keep it that way. Um, I don't like to have too much on there. One thing I'm enjoying, actually loving, was this is the first time I've actually gone through with pencil to plan out everything and I feel like I'm much happier with the way everything turned out because of that. Um, with pencils you can erase your mistakes <laughs> and that's why pencils have erasers for all of your mistakes so I just loved um, going back over and just tracing everything because sometimes I would see oh that's a little off-centered and I just fixed it um, with the pen rather than having to go oh I need some white out. Whiteout is my friend in my um, other planner as well, when I just go in with the pen. Each of these sections, um, I just plan on making one or two, probably just one big main goal for each of these, because um, eight goals is quite a lot. One is going to be my word of the year, which I am trying out balance for a couple weeks well maybe not a couple weeks maybe just until the first but I'm trying it out and seeing if it's gonna stick um, that's really the best way best advice I can give too is if you're doing the on um, the one little word challenge with Allie Wed words or if you're just choosing a word for the year and going with it is to pick a word and then try it on for a few days before you really confirm that that's the word that you want to go with. Um, my first year of choosing a word, I used focus, and I feel like that was the first year of my one word. Basically, I don't know, it, it felt like it actually worked for me, like choosing one word and then building off of that word. So all of my goals will definitely be based on my word. Um, so balance, um, you know, each of my goals will be figuring out a way to balance life instead of stressing myself out and trying to achieve this idea of perfection, which is unrealistic and I, don't need to do that. Um, I find that a lot of times my career um, sometimes takes over everything and I try to be perfect at it and it takes over and I don't want it to do that. I want to balance everything that I love as well as my family and my personal life and my health um, and my marriage and still be able to do the things that I love and build a business um, I feel like I let the sticky fox kind of fall at the wayside with I had a big career switch in 2018 switching from marketing and then going back into the teaching and education field it was intense um, this section this is gonna be my future log for these six no eight pages um, I went in with pencil for the actual um, month labels for those if you wanted to um, go back and look at them because I'm not quite sure I want to use those or I might find some script and just practice and practice and practice and then go back and um, make it the way that I want so you might see a lot of that in here which I feel like at first for a while I mean striving for that perfection I felt like it wasn't okay but I need to make it okay. It needs to be okay. It's okay for me. It's okay for you. If you're not happy with the way something's working, um, you know, find find a strategy that works for you to, you know, make it work for you. It doesn't have to be perfect every single time. I find each of my spreads are getting better year to year. My first bullet journal is a complete mess. <laughs> And I think that's okay. I 
look at this bullet journal this year and then look back at my previous two years, ones that I have not shared. And I love it. I am so in love with these spreads that I've done so far and I'm looking forward to building on, on my creativity and my art and doodling and things like that with this new bullet journal, which that's what I feel like bullet journaling is all about. It's kind of exploring and making things work and balancing, like what I did there, um, balancing everything that you love in one space without overwhelming yourself. And yeah, I think I think it's it's gonna be a good year with this one. Um, these two spreads that I'm doing here are things to try. I used to do. I'm sticking with this box thing, by the way. I'm loving the box and just the simple ribbon um, headers. It just feels simple and easy, easy to replicate, and it makes it all kind of tie together. Um, but the things to try page on my old bullet journals, I had a full page for movies and a full page for books and recipes or places that I wanted to go and I never used it. Um, I'd fill in one or two things and then I never come back, which, you know, I still want to use it, but I want to not waste space and it doesn't make me feel creative if it's a bunch of wasted space that I don't know, it's just not used correctly, so, in my mind. Um, for the page opposite of my things to try, I did a tried it and loved it page, and I just picked two sections for books and movies, and I just numbered one through 12, so one for every month. That is my goal for this year, is to read 12 books this year, one a month. Um, that'd be awesome if I did more. And then these last two pages here are the last two in my spread, actually, and they are probably my most used ever. I have done this way of bill tracking and kind of like a debt tracker page for the past three years that I've been doing um, using my bullet journal. And it is the most effective. We paid off our truck last year and it just feels so rewarding to go back in your bullet journal, as silly as that says, um, sounds, I mean, as silly as that sounds, to go back in your bullet journal and color in this kind of debt tracker um, thing. So the debt looks exactly the same as my um, one from last year. But the bills looks a little bit different from what I usually do. I ended up splitting everything up. I wanted to um, kind of split my bills up into more of the categories rather than just putting in um, a big old list, which it used to be. And it, it's nice to kind of categorize it that way and put it all together because then I can see how much we're spending on each section. So. Our top section is the house bills, so like our mortgage, water bill, um, gas, electric, etc. And then I have a cars section, and those are like the top two necessities. We both need our cars, we both we need all of those things. And then the next section is a media section, so that's like the internet, my phone, Netflix, all those fun bills. And then the bottom section is debt, and I will probably also include any miscellaneous things, like subscriptions or something like that. I did used to do a lot of subscription boxes, and now I don't do that anymore or try to, um, now that I am teaching again, I do not get paid as much. So we're cutting back on our expenses and, and kind of frivolous expenses here and there. Um, so basically how I use this bills tracker is on the right I have the dates and inside each little box I use a very fine point pen and fill in how much um, was paid for each bill for each month and that just works. It works for me. Every single month I just go through and track what we paid for what bill and it's so easy. And that little gray line down the middle is our due dates for each of those um, and then for the debt side each of these little boxes, so it's six months on top, six months on the bottom, 
each box shows will show um, how much we paid on top and then the current balance on the bottom and this has worked so well for us in demolishing our debt so that is it for my 2019 bullet journal setup I hope you enjoyed that I am excited to try and balance my YouTube channel and get back to planning and I will see you next time bye